Hello. Welcome to the second lecture of Math 184 and 564. And for those who join after the first lecture, this is your first lecture. Um, a couple of things. How do you find the, the um, recorded video? So you would need to go to the Collaborate Ultra. Then you, before you join the session, there is a menu bar at the left corner top left corner. If you click on the menu bar, you will see recordings. So far, I, I don't see anybody who has uh, reviewed the lecture video yet, perhaps because you don't know where to find it. I put an announcement to tell you how to find the, the video and also how to attend the lecture. So for students who are using this system first time, that might be helpful. Now, so I added a, a course program section, the course program section, you can find um, what we talked about the last time and where we are right now. Okay, so for, so for individuals, if you have a problem accessing, you may talk to me afterwards because I need to observe what's the problem before I can provide a solution. All right, thank you. So last time we talked about simple linear regression model estimations. Basically, we talked how you uh, estimate the model parameter beta zero and beta one by using least square. So last time, estimate zero and beta one, and this come from five. And today we are going to talk about hypothesis. Uh, beta zero, beta one, and this comes from section two point six. I'm talking about. I I know this is the internet. I, I, there's nothing I can do about the internet. You still can cannot, cannot hear me? Um, no. The connection was good before we have so many students joining in. I guess it's just the volume. The total bandwidth is just not enough. Nothing I can do. So for other students, if possible, can you um, turn off video? If everybody turn off video, probably it can help a little bit. All right. So in order to talk about the hypothesis test in beta zero and beta one, we first need to know the sampling distribution. The sampling distribution of beta, of beta zero and beta one. So to study the sampling distribution here, we first need to know, actually there are four assumptions or four conditions we assumed in a simple linear regression. These four conditions together can be called line condition. Each letter here stands for one condition. So the line condition is L, I, N, E. The line stands for here, the E of Y, I equal to beta zero plus beta one X, I. It says that E over Y I is the linear function of X I. We have this, it is derived from here actually, E of epsilon I equal to zero. Remember the simple linear regression model is this, Y equal to beta zero plus beta one X plus epsilon. For each of the um, 
sample point for each of x i if i put x i here i have y i here this will be epsilon i right so we, we can have e y i equal to just the first two that's because e of epsilon i equal to zero so this one the line condition is derived from here e of epsilon i equal to zero the i conditions here stand for that the epsilon i they are independent Epsilon i and epsilon j across this index here, they are independent. The n condition says the epsilon i here, they are normally disputed. Normally disputed. The e condition says the epsilon i here have equal varies. We denote that sigma square. So together, the four conditions together is equivalent to say, we just assume epsilon i, they are i, i, d, normally disputed with zero mean and common variance sigma square. As you can see here, it has to be common variance because I have sigma square, but I don't have sub i here. If I put um, sigma sub i square, that means each of the epsilon i have a different variance. But right now they have common variance. Across index i, they have the same variance sigma square. Okay. So all the dis uh, sampling distribution the property of beta zero hat and beta one hat are based on the, these conditions here. All right, so this is what we assumed to do the analysis of a simple linear regression. So um, with this, it's correct to say that E of yi is a linear function of xi. This is correct, but it's not correct to say yi is a linear function of xi. This is not correct. Because yi and xi have this kind of statistical relationship. You have epsilon i here, epsilon i is a random variable. So it's not correct to say yi is a linear function of xi. You have to say e or yi, okay? All right, now the first conclusion we have is that the sampling distribution of beta one satisfy this. Beta one is normally disputed with mean equal to the true population parameter beta one with variance equal to sigma squared over just the summation of xi minus xr squares. The question asks what is EE's expectation? expectation of something. All right, so beta one hat is also normally, so this formula here, this, this uh, expression here basically tell you three things. So beta one hat is normally disputed. And beta one hat is also unbiased. Why do I say it's unbiased? Because E of beta one hat equal to beta one. Okay, this is what it means by saying something uh, estimate is unbiased. It's unbiased estimate of the true population parameter beta one because E of beta one hat equal to this. And it also tells you the variance of beta one equal to sigma squared over summation of xi minus x bar squared, okay? x bar is just a simple mean summation of xi divided by n. All the summation here I have is from i equal to one to n. All right. So how are we going to prove that? We need to prove that one by one. 
So we learned from the previous lecture, beta one hat equal to summation of xi minus x bar, yi minus y bar, divided by summation of xi minus x bar square. This is the least square estimate. You already know this. And you see here, this one can be uh, decompose that into yi times this minus y bar times this, right? As you see here, y bar is constant with respect to the summation, i goes from 1 to n. Then you will find out that y bar times this, you can take out y bar, is equal to y bar times summation. And this summation is zero because summation of x i equal to summation of x bar. So this immediately reduced to x i minus x bar just times y i summation x i minus x bar squared. Okay, the minus y bar part is gone. Then you define k i equal to just x i minus x bar divided by the summation summation of x i minus x bar squared. I can write here, but you know this is just take down the whole thing from the bottom to here. This part move to here, and what you take is just this, but without summation. So this is ki. ki. With this definition, then beta one hat actually equal to summation of ki yi, right? So because yi, they are normally disputed, right? Why is normally disputed because of the n condition. Absolute i is normally disputed. As you can see from this formula here, y i is the first part is linear function of x i. Beta 0, beta 1, they are population parameters that are considered constant. X i is given. Once x i is given, you also treat it as, as a constant. But epsilon i here is random variable, it's normally disputed. So this whole thing together, once x i is fixed, it's equal to a constant plus a normally disputed random variable, right? So therefore, y i is also normally disputed. If y is normally disputed, this is a linear combination of y i. The k i part has no y i in that. You, can, you see here, in k i part, you only have x, x i, x bar, x i, x bar. So this is a linear combination of y i. Therefore, it one is normally disputed. Okay, the first part we already proved, normally disputed. Then we are going to prove that the E of beta one hat is beta one. So E of beta one hat here, because beta one hat is equal to summation of x i y, so E of that equal to summation of E of k i y i, right? And ki has no yi in that is considered constant, so you take out ki. So it's equal to summation of ki e yi. And the e yi, because e epsilon i equal to zero. So e yi is just equal to beta zero plus beta one xi, right? Beta zero is the constant with respect to the summation. You get beta zero summation ki plus beta one summation ki xi. And we are going to show that the summation ki actually is zero, summation of ki xi is one. So this one equal to zero plus beta one equal to beta one. So I'm going to show you that this summation ki equal to zero, summation ki xi equal to one. Question, how did yi minus y bar simply to adjust? All right, so for this part, we drop the y bar 
That's because y bar times summation of x i minus x bar is equal to zero. Can you see that? Y bar is constant with respect to the summation. You can take out summation of x i and summation of x bar is the same because definition of x bar is summation of x i divided by n. So summation of x bar repeated n times equal to exactly summation of x i. So this part equal to zero. All right. Okay, next I'm going to show you summation of ki equal to zero, summation of ki x i equal to one. So ki here, you need to still look at this. ki equal to xi minus x bar divided by summation of xi minus x bar squared. Okay, this is just copied from, from previous page. Summation of ki here, as you can see here, at the bottom, you already have summation i goes from 1 to n. So you can consider this part constant with respect to the summation because it already has no index i in there. So summation of ki here is just a summation of xi minus x bar divided by summation xi minus x bar squared. The top equal to zero. For the same reason I just talked about. Okay, and how come summation of ki xi equal to one? It's through summation of xi minus x bar times xi, right? This is summation of ki xi. The bottom part is same, you just have summation of xi minus x bar squared. For the same reason, the student just asked a question. So this part can be written as summation of xi minus x bar, xi minus x bar again, summation xi minus x bar squared. Why? For the same reason why we dropped x minus y bar here. Because x bar multiplied by this, summation of xi minus x bar is still zero, right? You basically minus zero from here. And as you can see here, this is the same. So it's equal to one. E of beta one hat equal to beta one. So it's unbiased. You have to prove the two things. The third, the variance. Variance of beta one hat. Sometimes I just write as V of beta one. You should know this mean the same. At the beginning, I may just write the longer notation to make you um, learn the notation, it's variance. But in short, it's just V. Okay. So the notation here, it is equal to the variance of summation x i minus x bar y i divided by summation x i minus x bar squared. You want to take the variance of this thing. So this is considered a coefficient of y i, right? I mean, actually, for each of them, just include up to here, not including the summation. So basically, this is the variance of a summation something times y i, right? Summation of k i y i. So take the variance, you should have a square of the first term of variance of y i. And because y i are independent of each other, y i's are independent of each other because epsilon i's are independent of each other. Remember y i equals to a constant part plus a random variable. The random variable part are independent of each other. 
because their independent covariance is zero, in that case, it's just equal to the square of the first part times the variance of y. So it's equal to the square of the first part, xi minus x bar square. The bottom part also needs to be squared. But the square is outside, OK? Square of coexistence times the variance of yi, OK? And the first part, as you can see, summation of x i minus x bar squared, summation of x i minus y, you cancel the ones, so you still have one. So you have summation of x i minus x bar squared. Variance y i, a constant plus a epsilon i, the constant part has zero variance. The epsilon i have variance sigma squared, right? So you basically just have sigma squared. Okay. So that's the three things we proved. And then take a moment. So we we assume the line condition at the beginning. But do we did we use the all four condition for each of the two? You should know clearly for each of the three things, which of the which one of the four conditions you have used to prove that the beta one is normally disputed? Which condition have you used? The first thing, beta one is normally disputed. Which condition you used? It's only just the n condition normally disputed to prove that beta one is unbiased. It's the L condition because you use the e of epsilon i equal to zero. To prove the variance, you actually use the both i condition, the independence condition, also the equal variance, okay? And you can see here, we, we assume each variance by i equal to sigma squared. This is uh, the result of the e condition, equal variance. Otherwise, each one will have a sub i here, and then you have a summation here, you won't be able to um, pick it out nicely. All right. Any questions so far? All right. So next we are going to talk about the sampling distribution of beta zero hat. So we just talk about the sampling distribution of beta one. Sampling distribution of beta zero hat. The derivation process is the uh, same, but I'm going to go a little faster. Okay, the, the conclusion here is beta zero hat is still normally disputed with mean equal to beta zero, with variance equal to sigma squared, one over n plus x bar squared, summation of x i minus x bar squared. Okay. So again, this actually tells you three things. First, it is normally disputed. Second, it's unbiased because the mean of a beta zero hat equal to beta zero. And the third thing is the variance. It tells you this. Variance equal to sigma squared. A little bit different from here, you have x bar here, you also have one over n here. So the variance part is different from variance of the beta one hat. Okay. So first, we are going to show that E of beta zero hat equal to just E of the formula for beta zero hat is just y bar minus this is just a formula for beta zero hat right this is strictly from straightforwardly from the least square estimation y bar minus beta one hat x bar and that can be written as e of y bar minus 
x bar take out, then you have e of base one hat. So when you do this e, the expectation, you must know clearly which part is considered constant, which part is considered random variable. Here, the only random variable is y. The random part comes from the absolute. Okay. <clears throat> So E of beta one hat, we already know this is beta one, right? And what we don't know is E of Y bar. E of Y bar is E of summation of Y divided by N, right? Definition of Y bar. So this equal to what? You take out one over N, now you have summation of E of Y I. And E of Y I equal to what? We already know it's beta zero plus beta one X I. So now you have summation of beta zero divided by N, you still get beta zero, right? And beta one take out. Summation of x i divided by n, you get x bar. Okay, plug in the formula before. So e of beta zero hat, you plug in this part to here, what do you get? So E of beta zero hat is just equal to the first part, beta zero plus beta one, x bar minus x bar times E of beta one hat is beta one. These two cancel, right? So you get beta zero. So we proved that it is uh, unbiased. As to whether it is uh, normally distributed, you can tell from here based on the formula. This is the formula for this is the formula for beta zero hat, right? It's y bar minus beta one hat times x bar. We already proved that beta one hat is normally distributed. Beta one hat is normally distributed. That is already proven, and x bar here is considered constant because it doesn't have random variable in there. Y bar here is linear combination of y i. It's a summation of y divided by n. So each one has coefficient one over n, but it's a linear combination y. Y i is normally disputed. So again, this is still linear combination of normally disputed variables. Linear combination of Gaussian is still Gaussian, right? So beta zero hat is still normally disputed. So I would just write here, beta zero equal to y bar minus beta one hat x bar is a linear combination of what? Yi. Yi is uh, normally disputed. Therefore, Beta zero hat is normally disputed. Okay, we proved the first two things, right? Normally disputed and unbiased. Next, we're going to show the variance, the variance of beta zero hat. So the variance of beta zero hat is just the variance of y bar minus beta one hat x bar. So I'm going to write as the two things here, if they are independent, it equal to just variance the first part plus variance second part. But if they are not independent, they have covariance, you have to include the covariance term. This is the case here because you have y bar and beta one hat. So you have to write it out and approve whether the covariance part is zero or not. 
because it's not obvious, right? So you, you basically have variance of the first part, y bar, plus x bar squared, variance of a beta one half. Then you have minus two times x bar covariance of y bar and the beta one hat. And then later on, we are going to show that this covariance part actually equal to zero. But you have to prove it. If it's like a y and y j, their covariance is zero. That doesn't need to be proved because you already know epsilon i, epsilon j, they are independent. Two independent uh, random variables have covariance zero. But here, both are linear combinations of y i. You have to show that actually have to prove the covariance equal to zero. All right, so I'm going to show this first and then before we can plug in this. So the covariance here, y bar and beta one hat is equal to covariance of summation yi divided by n, this is y bar and summation of ki yi. We used the summation of ki yi to represent beta one hat in the previous step. You hope you still remember that's what we used here, right? Okay, covariance of this two. So if they have, this has a summation i goes from one to n, this has summation i goes to, from one to n. If they have the same i, same index, then you have variance of y. If they have different index, one takes i, the other one takes j, then you have covariance, right? So basically you get um, summation of ki over n, then you have i. When they have the same i, i to i, then you get summation of ki and n here, they are linear uh, coefficient you take out, then you have basically covariance of yi and yi is variance of yi. Okay, then you have different index. From one to n, j not equal to i. Also goes from one to n. Take j. Okay. Now, what is covariance of y and y? Y i and y j when j not equal to i, this part has to be zero, right? Because we talk about epsilon i, epsilon j independent. So this part equal to zero. So you basically just have this first term, variance of y i times summation, uh, times k i and a take summation. So variance of uh, v i here, this part equal to sigma squared, it's common variance. So you take out, you take out, then you have just a sigma squared over n times summation of ki, right? Summation ki equal to zero, we just proved right here. Summation ki equal to zero. So this whole thing equal to zero. So with this, we prove that the covariance of y bar and beta one hat equal to zero. So the remaining part is just this two and putting together, we are going to have just the variance of beta zero hat equal to just the first term variance of y bar plus x bar squared variance of beta one hat. Just two terms. First, of the summation yi divided by n plus 
the second term, I'm going to just leave it. So each y I have, each y I have a variance of sigma squared, it's independent. So you have n times sigma squared, and the bottom part is coefficient has to be squared, right? Linear coefficient needs to be squared. Plus x bar squared. The variance of beta one hat you just proved equal to what? Sigma squared over summation xi minus x bar squared. Then you pick out sigma squared. This n and n canceled one. So you get one over n plus x bar squared. So why do we uh, go through all the pain to derive the variance? We derive variance because in order to do hypothesis testing, we need to derive the detail probability. The detail probability has to come from a distribution. All right. So right now we already have a clear picture. It's normally distributed. We know the mean, we know the variance. So everything is all set. All right. Because of this um, covariance y bar and the beta one hat equal to zero, from here we can also derive that the covariance between beta zero and the beta one here. So although it's basically when you study sample distribution of beta zero and the beta one, you know each variance, the variance of a, uh, beta zero and beta one individual, but you don't know the covariance yet. So you have to derive that. So covariance of y bar minus beta one hat x bar, that's the first term. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay, great, great. All right. So where where were we? We, we talked about the covariance of beta zero hat and beta one hat. So eventually it's just a negative x bar times the variance of beta one hat. So negative x bar divided by summation of x i minus i bar squared. See, there's no presence here, it goes here. All right.
So this is uh, the, the assumed so far we assumed word is known. Right? We assume the common variance is known, but in reality, a lot of times all you have is this data. You have x i y i i goes from one to n. You can have a hundred data points, but you don't know the actual true. This is still true population parameter. So if it's not known, if the sigma square is not already known, what do you do? You have to estimate, right? You have to estimate. So what would be a good estimate? For sigma squared. Okay, I squared, by I squared, do you mean the sample varies? Okay, good guess, but in the complex linear regression, you're not going to use that. And I'm going to explain why you cannot use the sample varies. So if sigma squared is not known, a unbiased estimate for sigma squared is this. We call that sigma squared hat equal to summation of yi minus yi hat squares divided by n minus 2. Okay. So the first part, if you have, um, we actually haven't talked about sum squares. So basically the first part, summation of yi minus yi hat squared, this is called sum of squares due to arrow, it's called SSE. It's called sum of squares due to arrow. So S as stand for sum squares, E is for arrow here. And we'll talk about other SS, there's SSR, SST, we're going to talk about that later. But right now, um, just for notation, I'm going to put this as SSE divided by N minus two. So why we use this as a estimate for the true population parameter sigma square, but not use the sample variance? Why not? use I squared. I squared sample variance def defined as yi minus y bar squared divided by n minus one. Yeah, it says again, my connection is poor. I think it has a accumulative effect. At the beginning, it was good for a few minutes, so then it gets bad. All right, so reconnect. Um, Actually, blackboard and entry again perhaps can help a little bit. That's a tip they, they, they taught me. Can you move the screen up? Screen. Paper. All right. This is the bottom of the paper. Do you mean up or down? Up. Okay, all right, you mean down. <laughs> all right. We all talk about this later, don't worry about it yet. All the sum of squares, we all talk about that later. But right now I just uh, um, want to point out what we put in here, y i minus y hat is already used the notation as I see. This will come from a later lecture, okay? So let's focus on the topic I want to talk about. Why don't we use the sample variance, summation y minus y bar squared divided by n minus one as a estimate for sigma square? Why not use this, anybody? Why don't we use this?
So in a, in a concept, we still want to use yi minus something that represents the mean and divided by something that represents the total number. It's kind of an averaging, right? So here we divide by n minus one, but here we divide by n minus two. It's a concept of average. But why do we use yi hat instead of y bar? Can anybody tell me? Well, think about the sample variance here is for one population, okay? The sample variance, this is called sample variance. It is for one population. What do you mean by one population? All the random variables you take here come from the same distribution, right? That's what we mean by one population. All the yi's come from the same, uh, same population, come from the same distribution. Right now, we have yi. We need to think about yi's. We know that based on our four conditions, they are independent, right? They are independent. But independent or not doesn't matter here. What matters here is are they identically distributed? Are yi's identically distributed? Yes or no? Each yi equal to beta zero plus beta one x i plus epsilon i. So it has a constant part plus epsilon. This is a random variable, random variable. But each yi has the first part, the mean of the e y i is a function of x i. If you change x, i this part changes. So for this reason, y i's they are independent, but not identically distributed. They are independent, but not identically distributed. If they are not identically distributed, you don't have something that plays a role of y bar. This formula here refers to everybody come from the same distribution, all the yi's have the same mean, but here in the context of linear regression, yi's don't have the same mean. Each yi have the mean of e yi equal to beta zero plus beta one xi. It depends on xi, okay? Yi's, they are not identically distributed. So in this case, you need something that better represents the concept the mean here to replace y bar. That's why I had, because we don't know the true mean. We don't know the uh, beta, true value of beta zero, beta one. We don't know the true mean. So use some kind of sample um, estimate. That is why I had, okay? Sample, the, ask, the value estimate from the sample that what we use here is y hat. That's why you can use y bar, you have to use y hat. The other thing you notice here is this one is divided by n minus one. Here you have divided by n minus two. And the reason why this one get n minus one here instead of n is, I hope you can remember from your previous stat class, it's because if you divide by n, it won't be a unbiased estimator. It will have bias. So you basically need to <coughs> multiply um, by n divided by n minus one in order to get rid of the bias if you do that. <coughs> so divided by n minus one is necessary to make s squared the sample variance a unbiased estimator for sigma square. But keep in mind that is for one population. In our case, this is not coming from one population. Each x I give you a population. If you still remember the scatter plot I, I draw in the first lecture. Okay. For each of x i here, you have a population here. In the middle, the mean here, that's the e of y i. That's mean. And it's a population around here. So how many population do you have? 
if your, your sample is like i goes from one to n then you have n populations each one is its own population it has different mean here all right so why do we need to have n minus two here that is because the degree of freedom for s is e the summation y minus y hat has n minus two degree of freedom okay why does this one have n minus two degree freedom? As you can see, summation y minus y hat here, each y i grid in one degree freedom. So basically, y value you can take freely without any constraint, right? So each y i bring in one degree freedom. But the summation i goes from one to n, you have degree freedom n. However, you also have y hat in the formula. How do you calculate y hat? y hat is a function of beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. To calculate beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat from the least square estimation, each of that has already used y, right? You don't have new free information <coughs> coming into y hat. All you use is just the existing information from y. So in that case, beta 0 hat, beta 1 hat is imposed as a constraint. So you have n three pieces of information you can move around freely. However, you have to subject to two constraints. The two constraints each will cost you one degree freedom. That's why you have a minus two. All right. Any questions so far? I know you have probably popped up some questions earlier before I explain that. Do you still have any remaining questions after this? And of course, we said this, this is an unbiased estimate for sigma square. We definitely will prove that. All right. So the properties of the unbiased estimate for sigma hat squared, as we defined, is summation of yi minus yi hat squares divided by n minus two. So first property, of course, we said it's on bars. We have to prove that E of a sigma square hat is equal to sigma square. So for this actually, um, for students coming from 476 class, we actually have proved that. This is already proved. Let me see. The, the proof actually is quite long. Proof for this is actually quite long. So we basically, um, I can give you some like a hint to give you the outline. The details you probably need to figure out by yourself because absolutely we don't have any, um, we don't have enough time left. Let me uh, give you the second and the third property. And in the end, I will give you as much as possible about the proof for the first one. So the first property is unbiased. Second property is n minus two times sigma hat squared divided by sigma squared. This one follows chi squared distribution with n minus two degree freedom. You know that the first part n minus two times this is just SSE, right? You can write just SSE over sigma squared. This follows chi squared distribution with n minus two degree freedom. And the third property we also have this sigma squared hat here, it is independent of those beta zero hat and beta one hat. Okay, so the third, second and third, we are not required to do the proof because it's beyond the scope of this class. You, you probably need to look at the earlier li literature to find the proof. And for the first one, it's still within your capability to prove. Okay, 
So we'll just prove the first one, E of sigma squared here equal to sigma squared. So um, so sigma squared here is has a S I S E in there. So you first write out S I S E. It's summation of y i y hat squares. Plug in the, what you get the uh, y i hat. It is beta zero hat beta one hat x i square. Beta zero hat is y bar minus beta one hat x bar, right? It's just plug in. So y i minus y bar plus beta one hat x bar. This is just for beta zero hat minus beta one hat x i square. So you can take out eight one hat combined terms. Right? So the next term is just expand that. Like a minus b squared equal to a squared b squared minus 2ab. So eventually, after I did, did some combination, eventually I got this summation of yi minus y bar squares, square the first term, minus beta 1 hat squares times summation xi minus x bar squares, okay? So you can do one more combination. So basically, um, take out this is again a minus b squared, so a squared b squared minus two ab, right? Then you, you get one more simplification. You get summation of y squared minus n times y bar squared minus beta one that squared, and this part follows. So it's still summation of x i minus x bar squared. Okay. So next we are going to take e. Expectation of S is E. E of S is E. So here you will see you have E of Y squared. We know what is E of Y, but you don't know what is E of Y squared. But this you're going to repeatedly, you also have squares here. You also have squares here. You're going to repeatedly use one formula, which is E of a random variable squared equal to what? The square of the mean plus variance. Okay. So you're going to basically uh, do for this, for this, for this, for the three, for first, the second, the third, for the three pieces separately, each will repeatedly use a formula E of something squared equal to the square of the expectation plus the variance of the random variable. So you get the, for the first term summation of yi squared, it is variance of yi plus e of yi 
squared. That's for the first term, summation of y i squared. This is a summation. I know. Summation of variance y i plus e y i squared. This whole thing for the first term. For the second term, you have y bar squared. So you have minus n e of y bar squared. You have e of y bar squares plus valence of y bar. And that's for the second term. For the third term, for the third term, summation of x i minus x bar squared, that is a constant you take out. So you basically have minus summation of x i minus x bar squared you take out, and you have e of beta 1 squared. It's basically it's just e of beta 1 hat squares plus variance of beta 1. OK, so that's for the three terms. So eventually, after you plug in what we already proved, v of y, this is the same as squared, e of y squared, this is beta 0 plus beta 1, x i squared, and plug in e of y bar, this is the sigma squared over n, but you have to square, um, sorry, e of y bar, y bar is summation y divided by n, so you basically get beta 0 plus beta 1, x bar, okay, squares. And v of y bar here is sigma squared over n, plugging everything we have so far. Eventually, after several steps of simplification, it comes down to n minus 2 times sigma squared. OK? So eventually, e of s s e divided by n minus 2 is just a sigma squared. The proof here is tedious. You, if you want to go through that, just to verify what I said, feel free to do that. It's, it's nothing but the basic arithmetic. All right. So for the whole thing here, we have three properties. what kind of assumption we use for the proof of the first property. The proof of the second and third is not required beyond the scope. But the proof of the first property, what kind of us? We have four conditions at the beginning. Which one of the four have been used? In the whole proof here, to show that E of sigma had square equal to sigma. So basically, we have used um, we use the e of epsilon i equal to zero because here when you do uh, e y i here when you do e y i you actually plug in beta zero plus beta one x i. When you do that, you already assumed e of epsilon i equal to zero. So that's the line condition, right? E y i is linear function of x i. And also when you do a variance with yi, you assume variance yi is sigma squared, that is the equal variance condition, so E condition used. So that's a, the condition. All right, so why do we use this? Why do we have to prove this anyway? So in practice, most time you don't know the true population variance, the sigma square mostly is unknown. So you have to use the estimate. And in order to finally get to the point of hypothesis testing, you have to derive what is the standard error of beta 0 and beta 1 hat. Because if you use in the earlier formula you have seen here, um, the formula for, let's say this is a, this is just a formula for beta 0 hat. You have sigma square here. If you replace this sigma square by sigma square hat, you have to derive 
if you define any test statistic, you know, for hypothesis testing, you have to define your test statistic. You have to find out what is distribution for the test statistic in order to derive the tail probability. If you have no idea what kind of distribution it is, and how do you know how to calculate the probability for, for example, x greater than some threshold value, right? So in order to come down to the, the distribution, we have to use property two and property three. That's why I give you this. All right. So finally, it comes down to the point, how do you do hypothesis testing? For, for example, I will just use a specific case that H0 says, okay, beta one equal to zero. The autonym says beta one is not zero. All the stuff we talked about before this point is just to lay down the foundation for our test procedure. Without that, you basically just memorize formula. You have no idea where it comes from. So the book only has the procedure for hypothesis testing. So let's say we just want to test if there is a significant uh, linear relationship between x and y. Right now we are talking about simple linear regression, so it's just one x. You calculate, you basically use d squared data the fitting, you get beta one hat. You get a beta one hat, which is not great, not very large value. So you kind of feel like, because the beta one hat is not accurate value, you kind of feel whether there is really a significant relationship between x and y. So you do hypothesis testing to see if beta one is zero. So for this, you are going to define your test statistic, call that T. T defined to be your estimate beta one hat. This is something you've calculated from the sample data, right? Minus the hypothesized value zero divided by the standard error of beta one hat. This is your test statistic. And if now it's true, it follows T distribution with N minus two degree freedom. I have add this under the now. Why is T distribution under the null? Under the null means assume that null is true. So this formula basically means if the null is true, that means beta one is zero. So beta one hat minus zero is actually coming from beta one hat minus the, the true value of beta one. Why do we do that? Because we do that because we know that beta one hat, we know that beta one hat is normally disputed with what? The mean equal to beta one and with variance. I'm going to just leave it as variance without details. If we use beta one hat, it's a random variable, normally distributed random variable, minus the mean of it, divided by, if it's divided by the true standard deviation, which is the square root of variance, you actually get a normally distributed Standard normal distribution, right? So basically, if you are doing this, if you define, let's say, if you define z equal to beta one hat minus the hypothesized true value for beta z, beta one, divided by square root of variance, okay? The square root of variance we just derived, which is sigma divided by square root of summation xi minus x bar square. Okay. If you define this, what kind of distribution do you have? What is distribution for Z?
Exactly, it will follow standard normal. If you define z equal to base one hat minus the true mean, of course, under the null, under the null, under the null mean assuming now the true. So this is beta one hat minus the mean divided by square root of variance. It's a standard deviation. It goes to the standard normal because beta one hat is already normally distributed. Okay. However, here we don't have true sigma. We are using sigma hat. So the t you just defined actually use the if you define t equal to beta one hat minus zero, everything else being the same, just use the sigma hat instead of sigma, still divided by square root of summation xi minus x bar squared. It follows t distribution with n minus two degree of freedom. Still, you have to stay under the null. Okay, coming from here to here, the only difference is to replace sigma by sigma hat. This is a z standard normal. This will be a t student t distribution. Why is that? That is because. The definition for t distribution is this z divided by w over n minus 2 follows t distribution of these n minus 2. So, what I put in n minus 2 here is, is just degree freedom. I could just use, okay, a standard normal divided by w over nu follows t distribution with nu degree freedom. This is a general formula, okay? I put n minus two here because n minus two equal to the degree freedom. In our case, in simple linear regression, we are talking about multiple linear regression. Your degree freedom will change. It won't be n minus two. Okay, so definition, go back to the definition for the t distribution. With this, you have to assume that z here is standard normal. W here follows chi-square distribution with n minus two degree freedom. And z and w here, they are independent of each other. So in our case, our definition here, have we followed, have basically have we exactly follow this, we, we satisfy all these three requirements. So the T we define here, beta one had minus the hypothesized value divided by this. This actually is a result of Z divided by chi-square distribution mena. Chi-square distributed the random variable W divided by degree freedom, okay? So this is our T, this is our T. Why is that? I probably will use a little, like two more minutes. So this is because beta one hat is normally disputed with mean beta one and variance sigma divided by xi minus x bar squares. That is the definite, that is distribution for beta one, right? And the beta one minus the true mean of beta one hat, this is beta one, divided by sigma over xi minus x bar squared. There's summation here. This one is n zero one, okay? This is our z, okay? This is our z. Our w here is the chi-square disputed s s e divided by sigma squared which is uh, the property we, we, we didn't prove, but we, we named it. This one is chi-square distribution with n minus two degree freedom. Altogether, if you use z over w divided by n minus two, give you exactly our t. That is uh, beta one hat minus beta one. 
then in here you have sigma hat squared divided by summation xi minus x bar squared. One more step, you take out beta one hat minus beta one, you take out sigma hat without square, divided by square root of summation xi minus x bar squared. This is our t, right? It follows exactly t distribution with n minus two degree freedom. So we put zero here. That is because under the null, the hypothesis here is to test if beta one equal to zero. Under the null, true value of beta one is zero. So the more, more general formula is this. In a more general formula, you will just, you just define the t equal to your calculated beta one hat from sample minus the hypothesis value of beta one, whatever it is, divided by this standard error of beta one hat. So, you, so here, basically, you just need to do standard deviation of beta one hat and the standard error of beta one hat. You should know the difference, right? Standard deviation here, you use the true population parameter sigma. For the standard error, you use the sigma hat. Everything else the same. Okay. So I may just write it here. So the standard deviation is sigma divided by square root of summation xi minus x bar squared. The standard error is sigma hat divided by this summation xi minus x bar squared. All right. So we haven't talked about how to find the uh, critical value yet. We'll continue from here next time. So basically right now, we only just have defined our, just defined our test statistic and then we know it follows T distribution. We'll continue from here next time. Any questions so far? No question? If there's no question, there will be a polling question. Could you upload the notes? I will ask you to write your own notes rather than just copy my note. The degree of freedom of Sum of I I I will just use I I E. A simple linear regression is n minus one. Yes or no? Okay, many students will require me to, to scan the note. Let me tell you, if I give you the note, you won't write your own note, okay? But all the uh, derivation for all the calculation, I want you to go through by yourself. If you missed anything in the lecture, you can go to the video, go to the video, and each paper stand uh, under the camera for like more than 20 minutes, you have enough time to pick up what you missed. Okay, but the requirement is that you write your own note. Okay. So far, nobody has watched the video yet. I look at the record, nobody has looked at the video yet. So. And also, you are not supposed to just look at the note without audio. A lot of things I said, but not written. And also, there are marks. You don't know what is meaning of that. So it's important that you take that as a whole. When you look at the note, you also listen to the explanation part. So if you missed anything, go to the video. You have video that's in, that includes everything. So the note you write, you must understand. All right. Most people have responded. If you have responded, you can leave.
Okay, thank you.